Well, good morning and welcome to our Good Friday service here at Christchurch Lavender Bay. Um, it's a wonderful service reading through this as I prepared. I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you are as well. And greetings from both me and from Lachlan this morning. Our service, of course, is being live streamed. My name is Shah Rizitti, if you haven't met me before. Before I start, just a brief mention, we have a tradition in Christchurch of having what we call a lavender card, a card where people who uh, would like to stay in touch and be involved can give us their contact details. Given that we can't physically meet, we have that now available online. If you'd like to uh, participate by completing that, you will find uh, to the right of the live, st li live stream video on our website a place where you can do that and submit that. The same function can be used if during the service you would like to submit any points of prayer or praise points for you or for people you know, if you would like them to be prayed for during our Easter Day service. Today, Good Friday, I'll be leading us through the Stations of the Cross style service from Mark's Gospel with liturgy from the morning prayer service, which will appear on your screen. Especially for our Good Friday service, we read from Revelation 5, verse 12. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. Open our lips, O Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Friends in Christ, we have come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building up of his church. We lift up our hearts in thanks and praise here from God's holy word and pray for this world and for ourselves. Today, with thankful hearts, we shall remember the death of Christ in our place for the forgiveness of our sin. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking forgiveness through God's boundless goodness and mercy. So let us draw near to God together with sincerity and confidence and pray. God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned through word and deed and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us, wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of your spirit that we may live the new life to your glory. And this we ask in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Well, God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Well, we'll now walk with Jesus as he journeys from the Garden of Gethsemane to the cross by reading through sections of Mark's Gospel. These readings will be interspersed with hymns. During these reading and hymns, you might wish to reflect on the passion of Christ as he takes on the sin of the world. And so we begin at Mark 14. They went to a place called Gethsemane and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. 
He took Peter, James and John along with him and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the 12, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man, wearing nothing but a linen garment, was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind.
They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests in the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple and in three days will build another, not made by man. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do you need any more witnesses? he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and he went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them, and again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, surely you're one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you are talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and he wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release you to you, the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. 
but they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. We begin our time of prayer with the collect for Good Friday. So we say together, Almighty God, look with mercy on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Our choir was practicing a hymn to sing especially for today. The first verse says, O come and mourn with me a while, O come ye to the Saviour's side, O come together let us mourn, Jesus our Lord is crucified. Lord, what would we have done? Would we have fallen asleep and then run away terrified like the disciples in Gethsemane? Thank you, Lord, that you forgive us for our weakness when we opt out and run away from conflict and the cost of following you. Would we have shouted Hosanna on one day and crucify him on another? Lord, forgive us when we fail you because it is easier to follow the crowd. Would we have slunk away ashamed from the horror of Calvary? Lord, we thank you that you forgive us when we let you down as we see so clearly in your dealings with Peter after the resurrection. We thank you that your love is stronger than all the evil that we or the world could throw at you. Lord Jesus, ours was the sin you bore, ours the ransom you paid, ours the salvation you won. Accept our prayers and our thanksgiving and make us more worthy of your love. Amen. Verse 3 of that hymn says, Seven times he spake, seven words of love, and all three hours his silence cried for mercy on the souls of men. Jesus our Lord is crucified. When they crucified Jesus, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It was your love, Lord Jesus, that caused you to be nailed to the cross. It was your love that held you there when you might have called out for legions of angels to rescue you. It was your love that pleaded for your murderers and prayed, Father, forgive them. 
Help us, most gracious Lord, to grasp the depth and vastness of your love, to receive your forgiveness and to learn to forgive others, even as we have been forgiven. For your name's sake. Amen. From the cross, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Out of the darkness of Calvary, O Holy Son of God, we hear your lonely cry of dereliction, and we bow in penitence and acknowledge our guilt. You bore our sins in your body on the cross. You were made a curse for us, and you tasted death for everyone. Jesus, Lamb of God, Saviour of the world, have mercy on us and teach us to know that you were forsaken so that we might never be forsaken, but walk in the light of God's presence now and forevermore. Amen. At the end, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Father of mercies and God of love, in his last words from the cross, your son, our saviour, committed his spirit into your hands. We today would do the same. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, in a world facing fear, disease, death and huge economic challenges, in your hands alone, loving Father, we are secure. There is no other place where we would rather be. And so, Father, we commit ourselves to you afresh, our souls and bodies, in life and death, in time and for eternity. Strengthen our faith and empower our lives to glorify you. In the blessed name of Christ we ask it. Amen. And now a prayer for the church. We thank you, Lord Christ, that by your death and resurrection, you brought to birth the new redeemed family of your church in which faith and love transfigures all our relationships. Draw us as believers closer together at the foot of the cross, especially at this time when we are unable to meet together physically in one place. Teach us to welcome and care for one another in obedience to your word, and unite us in a fellowship of faith and compassion as members of the one family to serve our Heavenly Father's kingdom and to do his will to the glory of his name. Amen. And the last verse of the hymn reads, O love of God, O sin of man, in this dread act your strength is tried and victory remains with love, for love himself was crucified. And now we're going to join together in the Lord's Prayer, which Jesus taught us. Together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they, stuck, they struck him on the head with a staff and they spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. 
It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice on the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. 
Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger uh, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Well, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, as we come before you on this Good Friday, we ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts to fully comprehend the depths of your love for us in Jesus' death. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, certainly uh, this is a Good Friday like no other. We find ourselves coming together in church, not in church physically, but uh, online. In fact, due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic, we find ourselves fellowshipping in some very different ways nowadays. We're, we're finding new ways to connect, whether that be through the telephone or whether that be through social media or Zoom conferencing calls. Fellowship seems different, doesn't it? One of the things I've enjoyed is uh, connecting on, uh, on Facebook, and a good friend of mine started up a new Facebook page for those who went to Christchurch St Dives Youth Fellowship in the 80s and 90s. Uh, back then, uh, when we were just uh, 16, 17-year-olds, uh, we took a lot of photos and we enjoyed a lot of camps together. And a lot of photos have been posted on this Facebook page and it's bring back some great memories, some wonderful times of the camps that we had, whether that be at uh, Teen Ranch or going up to the Whit Sundays together or water skiing camps or camping together or church camps in various different places, or whether it be our favourite sermons that were preached at Christ Church or our favourite songs that we sung, it was sweet fellowship that we were in and all of these photos uh, brought back all of those memories. In fact, one of the photos that was displayed was a photo of me on the day that uh, I was confirmed. In fact, uh, Bishop Paul Barnett confirmed me uh, back in 1988. And earlier than that, in 1987, there was a photo that was put up of the very day that I became a Christian. The very day that I chose Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour, and I remember that day so fondly. It was at Teen Ranch, which is a Christian campsite up in the Southern Highlands. And I remember the speaker there teaching us about what Jesus had done and that his death was a good thing. And I remember being so perplexed about how on earth somebody's death could be a good thing until I heard him explain that through Jesus, God's very own son, his death on the cross took the penalty that I deserve for my autonomy against God. That is, those things that I've not only said, thought and done, but the attitude of my heart. When my heart has said, I don't need you, God. I can live life my own way. I am my own king and my own boss. And I remember at that moment turning to Jesus and praying a prayer that he might forgive me and that I knew that because of his death, as I just found out, that I could be forgiven and I was forgiven by accepting Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. And I remember after that prayer, everything changed. The fellowship that I had with God was brand new. A weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I had found forgiveness where I didn't even know that I'd needed to be forgiven before that point. I found myself wanting to live, to worship God and to be thankful for him, for what he had done for us in Jesus, rather than wanting to live a life that was seeking to serve myself. And I remember it wasn't only uh, my relationship with God that was renewed, it was my relationship with my friends as well at that camp. It was sweet. The fellowship was sweet as we enjoyed each other's company, as we enjoyed being the body of Christ with Jesus as our head, as we enjoyed singing songs to him. And I remember one particular song that still sticks in my mind is a really important song. It's not particularly a Christian song, but nonetheless you might remember it, Dave Dobbin singing A Slice of Heaven. 
That song uh, for Foot Rot Flats, the movie, uh, became a hit back in the 80s. And indeed, for me, it is a picture or a reminder of that slice of heaven that we enjoyed as youth at that youth fellowship camp on that particular, that particular day for me when I became a Christian. It was a slice of heaven as we gathered together. It was a slice of heaven as we sung praises to God. It was a slice of heaven as I grew in my relationship with him. It was an incredible time of fellowship together. But we find ourselves in new times now, in times where we're not together, times where we are separated from each other, and separated from our family and separated from our friends and separated from the things that we love to do, the good things that God has given us, separated from the work that we enjoy. Well, certainly uh, if we're working from home, not quite that separated. But nonetheless, we feel that anguish of separation. And we know it's only been a few weeks so far, and perhaps there's uh, weeks and months ahead. My heart particularly goes out to those who are living alone, who don't have someone that they can connect with, that uh, are completely cut off and are self-isolating because they're vulnerable. My heart goes out to them. It brings us to the point of remembering the point of this Good Friday, remembering that Jesus was separated from his own father. You see, really, at the moment, we're not all that separated. We still have technology that connects us. We're still, still able to speak with each other. We still can have a form of fellowship. But here's what complete separation sounds like. From Mark chapter 15, as Jesus hung on the cross, three o'clock in the afternoon, and Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi! Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, at that moment on the cross, Jesus felt true separation from his father. The Godhead, the three in one, being torn apart, just as that temple curtain was torn from top to bottom, as the, as the day turned to night in that moment of anguish, as the Godhead, the Trinity, was now separated from one another. That incredible moment when Jesus was separated from his Father, and he took the separation that we deserve. He took upon his shoulders at that moment the separation that we deserved because of our sin, because of our declaration of autonomy before God. And God said that there needed to be an accountability for that. There needed to be a punishment, a price to be paid, and Jesus paid that price. He atoned for our sin at that moment such that we might be free, such that we can have that restored relationship with God, such that we can be amongst those creatures gathered around the throne in that revelation picture and singing out, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. And so we find ourselves on this Good Friday being thankful that we're not completely separated that we do still have fellowship, although it's a little bit different from what we're used to. We're still able to be in contact with our family, and most importantly, we're still in contact with God, that we can have a relationship with him, even our own lounge room, as we enjoy fellowship in a different way through live-streaming church. We realise we're not separated from him because Jesus took that separation for us on that first Good Friday, and we are so thankful for that. And so we find ourselves on Good Friday both perplexed that God should send his only son to die for us, realising the depths of our own sin that required him to do that, but also incredibly thankful that he did do that, that he had a rescue plan for his people that involves us as well. And so we find ourselves repentant at this moment, saying, sorry for our sin. And thank you, God, for Jesus, his death in our place. Let me pray. Dear Father in heaven, we can't imagine the anguish wrought upon the Godhead at that moment when son was separated from father. But we are thankful that in Jesus dying in our place, we can be forgiven simply by saying, Jesus, you are my Saviour and my Lord. I'm sorry for what I've done against you. Please forgive me. Help me to turn away from sin and turn towards you day by day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
It was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learnt from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took the body down, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Well, having walked with Jesus to the cross, it's right for us now to affirm what we believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. And I invite you to join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins and the life, the body and the life everlasting. Amen. So we're coming to the close of our service and we have a special hymn that the choir has been rehearsing for this Good Friday service, which is a wonderful thing to hear our choir together again. Um, it would be great to have our choir back in church, but sadly that's not something we can do. So instead, with much appreciation, Hamish, James and Gareth will be leading us as we sing. This would normally be our offertory hymn, but as we can't pass around the offertory bags, I do encourage you to remember that we do of course have ongoing needs, as always with the church, and I encourage you to consider giving via EFT the details, of course, are on the website under the live stream video. So let's sing, There's a Green Hill Far Away.
thank you for joining with us on our Good Friday service for 2020, and thank you, Shah, for leading us. Can I uh, encourage you, as Shah did earlier on, on in the service, to please do fill out the lavender card that's uh, right next to the live streaming video. We, we'd love everybody who's been watching the service to fill that out so we have a record of how many people were online watching. And of course, we'd like to send you our greetings as well. If one person in your household could fill out that card and then in the comments section, just mention uh, who was uh, joining you in your living room or your place. And of course, if you do have any prayer or praise points, you can place those down there and uh, I can pray for you on Sunday, Easter Sunday, those prayer and praise points. Well, as our service draws to a close, as is our habit, we enjoy morning tea afterwards. It would normally be hot cross buns, and perhaps there are hot cross buns in your home. As you eat your morning tea and drink your uh, cup of coffee or tea or other beverage, can I encourage you to perhaps call somebody, somebody that you know, and encourage them in the Lord. Uh, tell them that you are watching the live stream service and uh, encourage them to tune back in for Easter Day at 10 a.m., on Easter Day, we're going to have a celebration service. And as part of that service, we're going to have a kids' talk, and there'll also be a kids' song that's available. The kids' talk is based upon uh, this Bible Society booklet, the who, what, why, how of Easter. Jesus died and rose again. And we'll have some of our Christchurch Lavender Bay actors who will be acting out that uh, story. If you have children, I encourage you uh, at my place, at Christchurch Lavender Bay at the rectory, there's some of these books available on the back, uh, the back uh, doorstep there if you'd like to come around and grab some of those. That's perfectly all right. If you'd like me to, uh, to post them to you, please on the lavender card fill out your details and we will post those to you as well. They won't get to you by Sunday, but you can still have them uh, to remind yourself what Jesus, uh, what Easter is all about. It's all about Jesus, of course. Well, friends, as we close this service, one final prayer that we can pray together. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the grace together, and perhaps if you are in your home, you might like to hold hands as we say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless, and we'll see you on Easter Sunday.